The former leader of the SDLP has called for the return of power sharing in Northern Ireland following the death of Lyra McKee. The 29-year-old was shot dead during rioting in Derry. Two teenagers who were arrested over the murder have been subsequently released without charge. Let's speak now to McFielty, the editor of Slugger O'Toole. McFielty, welcome to you. Just looking at the words of the Catholic Bishop of Derry, who said the community in the national area where the shooting, the fatal shooting happened, uh, needs to be, quote, liberated from dissident Republicans. Yeah, and, you know, unusually under, around this incident, there has been exceptional leadership provided by the Catholic Church, first of all by the parish priest, who laid it out in no uncertain terms that a proposal by the organisation who killed Lyra on Thursday night, uh, that they were not to be seen anywhere in Derry. Now, a Catholic authority uh, the, the authority of the Catholic Church has been on the wane for many years, by and large because it's out of step with the feeling of its own people. But I think on this occasion, both the, the parish priest and the Bishop of Derry are absolutely in lockstep with, with a community which is, is you know, 100% Republican, but is, is almost 100% uh, reviled by, by what happened to, to Lyra on on Thursday night. Uh, Mick, can I just quote you a question actually that's posed by one of the contributors to your website who writes, uh, can we expect a muting of communal rhetoric, sorry, a muting of communal rhetoric during what's left of the council elections campaign and the euro elections uh, to come? Or after a short pause, will they ramp it up as electoral tensions reach a climax? Um, you imagine the answer to that, the second part of the question is yes, it will be business as usual quickly. Well, no, I think it's really important to understand the premise of the question before attempting to answer it. What's behind that question is that our politics has become so polarised that the only thing that really matters, and this applies to both Sinn Féin but also the DUP, despite the fact that Arlene Foster came and made a very moving speech in Cregan, is that their political capital almost solely rests on communal identity. Um, and 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 because of that, in a way, once they get into government, now we don't have, we haven't had government for two years, but there's been no real noticeable difference between them being in power and not being in power. So the question is a fair one. I th I think at least in the short term there will be a, ta a a tamping down of that rhetoric, but I also think there's a real pause for thought that needs to go on on the Republican side of this. This has happened within... Lyra died within an hour of Good Friday. And Easter is not only an important religious holiday in Ireland, it's also highly politically charged because it's the anniversary of the Easter Rising, that, that violent revolution which uh, the Irish state itself even uh, commemorates as the founding stone of, of Irish independence from the United Kingdom. Uh, it, it's also highly symbolic of renewal and rebirth. And it seems to me that the killing of a young Catholic woman, I hesitate to call her nationalist because Lear was never easily definable as one thing or the other. She lived for a kind of a complexity that has drained out of Northern Irish politics. So I would hope, in a way, the shock that's rebounding around the city of Derry and those Republican areas, that people begin to think again about what their Republicanism means to them personally and, and, and how they can go about it in such a way that lessens us returning back to this terrible moment. Uh, Mick, is it important, particularly for people who don't understand Northern Irish politics and, and the history of the Troubles, that we, we understand that uh, London Derry stroke Derry is not necessarily representative of, of Northern Ireland at large? Well, no, it isn't. Uh, in many ways, it's, it's radically different. It's highly polarised for a start. There are very few uh, Protestant or... or uh, I mean, it's cut... It's a bit like Mostar. It's kind of cut by... Uh, the River Foyle, and on one side is a largely Catholic population with the exception of about 400 Protestants still hanging on in one little enclave in the, in the shadow of the city walls. And then on the other side, largely that's where most of the Protestants live, but more and more it's becoming a mixed, uh, a mixed area. 
I say mixed, but they're, it's a bit like oil and water. They tend not to live together, but on se separate housing estates. That's not quite the picture elsewhere in Northern Ireland. But quite specifically, if we hone into Cregan, um, this is a, a marginal constituency of the type that you see in places like Oldham. Uh, we, we saw a terrible uh, uprising in St Paul's, in Bristol, in Toxteth, in Liverpool in 1981. Uh, but of course, back in 1981, there was a Michael Heseltine who pretty much ran into those areas, set up a task force, looked for what was going wrong, tried to come up with policy solutions, almost against the run of the Thatcherite revolution in a way, which was about descaling skate inter intervention. Michael Heseltine was a, cor a great corporatist leader in a sense, and was able to deploy resource, of course, in the vacuum that we've got. And this is why Colm Eastwood is, is correct to call for uh, uh, some kind of collective return to to local power at Stormont, that, that in the absence, in the power, in the absence of that, that, that there has been no political will to deal uh, directly with, with, with areas like the Cregan, you know. And let's not forget, this is not a solely Republican thing. Paramilitarism. Both parties have failed to tackle the scourge of paramilitarism in their own backyards. Just months ago, Ian Ogle was stabbed to death by loyalist paramilitaries in 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 loyalist inner East Belfast. So there's a huge amount of work to be done here. Okay, Mick, we've got to leave it there. Mick Fieldy is the editor of Slugger Road Tool. Thanks very much indeed for your time. Thanks a lot.